Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are doing a pick a card reading for the energy of your next week. So a pick a card reading means that I have multiple piles for you to choose from. You choose one or you can choose more than one. That's up to you. You, you do you. <laughs> so I have three piles here today. One, two, and three. You can choose based off the number, off how the pile looks, off of a shadow, However you wish to choose, um, I also have timestamps down below. You can look at the numbers and whatever resonates that way. You can choose or if you like to choose with objects, I will be placing objects here in a moment. So the whole idea is that you engage your intuition to figure out the pile that is right for you or that you're drawn to. Meet me at the timestamp down below in the description and I will use my intuition to read the cards for you. Elevated intuition, that's what that means. <laughs> so I'm um, also a couple things. First of all, I didn't realize this until I was watching some of my videos. This is a Woodwick candle. I love the way it dances. I love the smoke that it puts off, a little bit of smoke here and there. But do you hear that? It's crackling. So that's what the crackle sound is. It's the woodwick candle. I'm like, why is there, why is my thing so fuzzy? It's the candle. Um, objects. So to this week we are doing rubber duckies. So I um, rated my daughter's rubber duckies and this is what I have. So for group one, this is a fairy duck. Um, group number two, this is a lucky duck. And for group number three, this is a unicorn duck. Um, the other thing that I ask is, hey, just thanks for being here and give my video a like. I really appreciate that. It really helps me out in the algorithm. That's the only thing I'm going to ask for you um, through this whole reading is just Give it a like, and there we go. Um, oh, and let's talk about the ducks. So what's really interesting about these ducks too is if, if you have a Jeep, or you know anything about Jeep culture, Jeep, I'm talking about the vehicle, um, there is something within the Jeep culture called ducking, where you take a duck, like a rubber duck like these, and you put it on another Jeep um, that you like, and that is called ducking. So I just thought I would share that as well. And I just want to give you more looks at these guys. If you still don't know what, which one to pick, I'm gonna do a breathing exercise that you are welcome to do that with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my eyes and take a deep breath in and release, just release any tensions, set the intention that you are going to hear what you need to hear for your next week or for this moment, and take another deep breath in, and release. Now open your eyes, and wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the pile for you. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the love. Love you too, and I will meet you at your reading. Hello, group one. If you picked this um, purple fairy duck, <laughs> I suppose it's a fairy duck. If you have a better idea of what it is, what kind of duck it is, let me know in the comments. So if you picked this one, you are in the right place. And the first card that comes out for you from this Affirmator's deck is ideal partnership. I am a rare and precious find and my brilliance will be reflected back to me when I am paired with a true match. My ideal partnerships and working relationships are easy and free flowing. I deserve greatness because I am greatness. And to paraphrase Rumi, um, what I'm looking for is also looking for me. In fact, he or she might be paraphrasing Rumi right now. Hmm. So what I love about this particular card is, um, 
We've got the wine and the cheese here that are together. They're the perfect pairing. They're not exactly the same, but they complement each other. So it's not that you have to look for somebody who is exactly like you, just somebody that goes with you, somebody that, that understands your uniqueness. And maybe they don't get it fully, but they don't um, try to um, like overshadow you or make you change or make you feel like you're anything less than you are. Um, the other thing about like, this says Merlot 2010. I don't know if that's a good year for Merlots. Um, and then we've got this cheese and it's a special cheese that goes specifically with this wine. Um, it is about uniqueness. It is about embracing your uniqueness. You don't have to change for a partner or a person. That is something that you need to remember. Um, the right person is, you know, is a compliment to you. Okay. So coming out right away here with the King of Swords. Um, let's see what else we get. We get the Page of Swords reversed. That's interesting. Um, we also get two of cups reversed. Okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because ideal partnership would be our two of cups upright. So I'm sensing that you are a little bit skeptical about um, the ideal partnership that I just read to you. And maybe it's not um, something that's going to happen next week, but something that certainly is put in motion can also mean that your partnership is more plutonic rather than um, romantic but it really depends on what you're looking for and let's see one more card whoa did you see that one fly out <laughs> that's why i love um taking cards the way they fly out because i feel like then whatever is meant to be here is meant to be here so we've got the king of swords we've got the page of swords reversed and then we've got the page of wands up right here and then of course our two of cups reversed which i was talking about in relationship to this ideal partnership because an ideal partnership would be this two of cups upright and we have it reversed which gives me the idea that we have some conflict in this area whether it is that you have felt like um in the past that you're not getting this reciprocal relationship maybe you are having um some um, troubles in this relationship aspect or perhaps that this 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 relationship isn't um, going the way that you you feel like it should um, we've got the page of swords in reverse here I feel like um, I almost feel like again some more conflict here when we've got the king of swords upright and the page of swords reverse we feel like that these both of these should be upright if we have a strong king of swords somebody who like basically commands that suit commands that suit of swords he's somebody who has gone up through the ranks and learned a thing or two and who now kind of like rules everything that when we have this strong leader the strong personality um, our page of swords should be in order too and it's not um, it feels like there is some information that's missing for you. There's some communication issues. Sorry about that interruption. So it almost feels like the King of Swords here who should be really in charge, taking control, um, just end all be all of everything. There is some distrust, distrust here with this King of Swords. It almost seems like um, this is a potential partner for you, and while you like this idea of this ideal partnership, it's not going the way that you think it should. There's some distrust and disharmony here. Um, and when we have the Page of Swords reversed, it kind of talks about um, all talk and no action. That, okay, yes, we have this beautiful, grandiose idea of the of the ideal partnership, but it's how do we get that to materialize for you? So it's really interesting that these cards came out here for you because I don't necessarily intend on these readings to be about relationships. And this can totally be about a platonic relationship or a work relationship as well. Just take it as it relates to you but you know i really cannot ignore when we have the two of cups and the ideal partnership it 
It kind of reminds me of when I was in 4-H, I did this thing called horse judging. And um, I know, <laughs> but um, we're, but any type of judge, whether you're, I'm judging horses or, you know, the judge in the case that's been going on right now with, uh, uh, recently with um, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, takes the ideal and compares what is in reality to the ideal and how close you are to it. And when it doesn't match up, and maybe the King of Swords is somebody who is like your ideal, this take charge kind of person, this person who is very logical, who tells you how it is, um, the thing that could be missing here is the emotional component. And when I was talking about this ideal partnership is sometimes we have this ideal of the person who it is that we want to work with, the person who it is uh, and, the, and the qualities, the person who it is who we want to be in a relationship with. Even like the ideal of like what I what I want my my mother to be or what I want my children to be. Even though we have this ideal, sometimes it's not necessarily that. So we either have to um, take what we have and communicate your needs and what you want. And this is kind of like the page of swords as things are not being communicated or you may not even really realize what it is that you want. I think you need to think about that and compare your current situation to that ideal and then take a look at what it's going to do or what it's gonna be or what it's gonna to take to move you from where you are and, and you know, move you from this page of swords to the king of swords kind of thing. When you're reaching this, this page of swords, this person who pages are, um, they're not as mature as like the king. They don't know as much. They maybe try hard, but again, like I was saying, especially when it's in reverse, this is somebody who talks a good game, but they just have no follow through. They're not doing that for you. And either you need to communicate your needs to them, or you need to decide that it's you need to go in pursuit of this king of swords or somebody who you thought was the king of swords is really now showing up as the page of swords reversed for you. And that's okay, you know, relationships move, relationships change, we, we come up to, op I mean, this is life. This is what life is made out of. So you have to decide what it is that is going to be your complement. What is going to give you those warm and fuzzy feelings so that you feel like you are in a reciprocal relationship where you have this give and take, where you have somebody, again, like I keep, uh, I was saying, like just because they're two pandas and you put them together doesn't mean it's going to be a great relationship. The wine and cheese have a better relationship than let's say the two pandas or if you had two wines or two cheeses, if the, you know, if you understand what I'm talking about, you need somebody who compliments you. And again, this can be work related as well. If you are in um, doing a project and you're the very creative person, you need somebody who's going to do the follow through. If you are somebody who likes to create spreadsheets and check things off of lists, you need somebody who can come in with some inspiration. And maybe that is not, um, maybe that annoys you at first and that might be the situation here where you're meeting somebody and this is maybe exactly who you need but it's not what you thought you needed so there is definitely this week more of an idea of like broadening your mind about your relationships and what's going on with them and how you see yourself in them and how you see your relationships and how you see that person and then going back to them and communicating because nothing gets changed or nothing gets understood and a lot of t until you express yourself and let them know what you need and a lot of times like even just the act of expressing yourself and telling them what's going on is really important in and of itself and, and speaking as a divine feminine when I talk to divine masculines like that's all I need <laughs> I need you to to just listen to me like say oh I'm so sorry and then that's it and then that solves the problem I don't actually need you to solve the problem I need you to listen to me as I solve my own problem so and, and I'm just expressing that as like you know you you get that out of your mind you get that out of um 
And, and when we've got the swords here, it seems like there's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot of things rattling around in your head. There's a lot of things that you need to express yourself and you may not feel like emotionally that you can, but you really do need to do that. And letting those emotions go so that you're not emotionally attached to what you're saying, kind of become an observer of the situation and say, you know what, um, this is what I need, This is these are my needs, this is this, 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 and this. Um, can we work on that or can we do that? Can we move forward with that? And I feel like that's when you start creating this complementary relationship where we have the two of cups that flips around for us and becomes that. Um, reciprocal complementary relationship that you want and need desire and deserve and the great news here is we've got the page of wands and it could be too when we're looking at the swords like the suit the suit of swords yes logic has its place um, it is absolutely necessary and we do need to be able to control our emotions so that we can communicate what it is that we need, what it is our desires are, all of those types of things. It has its place, but it can be kind of cold. Um, and but So that's why I love that we've got the page of wands, like we're kind of ending with that page of wands over here, because this is like limitless potential. I feel like unlocking this relationship, unlocking, um, this, it, it's not, I'm not telling you to break up. And a lot of times when you, we get the two of cups reversed, you're like, whoop, run. This isn't that. This is making sure that you are heard, making sure that you are understood, making sure that your needs are being met, but also your partner's needs. And the partner in the sense of, this is a work relationship partner, that you guys are working together and feeding off of each other um, and being very productive in that way your partner, romantic partner, your partner could, again, like I said, your your family, it could be like your mom, like, hey, you know, this is what I really need for you to, from you to support me. And, but you have to understand that this is gonna be a two-way street. It's gonna to need to be reciprocal because when you say things like that, you're gonna be opening up a door and they have the opportunity to tell you how they need you to support them as well. And then when we have that, we have the ideal partnership. But doing all of this that I'm talking about over here transforms into this page of wands, which is about moving forward with limitless possibilities, new inspiration, and just going for it. And this feels, it, it is new territory because it's a page, it's not a king, but it, it, it feels like really good and there's a lot of inspiration coming from it. So two more cards here for you, group one. Um, Let's see what else we have. Advice, we've got tree wisdom. And I just wanna get one more card and we will look more deeply into it. Tree wisdom and wisdom, <laughs> okay. So let's see, let's start with tree wisdom. Um, this tree, this tree dryad will help you navigate through your current situation. Her flute can reveal insights and answers through the sounds it makes. Um, I was gonna say like, you know, cause she's, you can see her with here with a flute. So sometimes the best meditation or sometimes the best mood booster can be music. Um, as a mom, <laughs> one of my like, um, therapies is just sitting in my car by myself and listening to music. And I feel like you can find some inspiration from that. Um, whatever situation that you're in, there is music. So don't discount that as um, some inspiration for you. And then wisdom. Have you ever been told that you're wise beyond your years? Now is the time to call upon your inner fairy wisdom to help you with a challenge. So one thing about wisdom, and I've talked about this too, kind of relates to the King of Swords a little bit here, is if you're not fully happy in a situation, that is okay. Let's engage our wisdom. Let's engage our logic. 
are, you know, let's let go of some emotions and really look at this um, with our mind and then we can speak with our heart because it seems like we're speaking to people who we care about. Um, with whatever, uh, if this is a platonic relationship or a romantic relationship, it's somebody that we care about. It's somebody that we want to continue to have a relationship with. It's just that we want to change the dynamics of this relationship a little bit. So having both of these kind of wisdoms coming in for us. The other thing that's really interesting, um, it didn't really speak to this with tree wisdom, but you can see it almost looks like she is part of a tree here grounding yourself can be very, very helpful, especially when we've got a lot of um, air energy, which is the suit of swords here. When we have a lot of air energy. We've got a lot of thoughts going around. And if we don't like ground those thoughts, if we don't look at those thoughts with logic, and these thoughts, they should be logical. If we don't use our wisdom to help um, bring these thoughts back down to earth, and be very practical with our thoughts. Um, it can just it can just blow out of proportion and just become completely ridiculous. So um, I feel like a grounding is something that's very important to you. Um, music is a, is a great way to ground. I like to get my hands dirty. That's how I ground. Or I go do something with plants, um, walking barefoot just going outside, getting some fresh air, those are things that are very important and could be very beneficial for you this next week, group one. So that's what I have for you. And again, like we always have challenges coming into relationships and it's taking the ideal and taking what we have right now and sometimes we have not even thought about the ideal. Like what is our ideal relationship where we're, where we're having this reciprocal energy where I'm helping you, you're helping me, and we're complimenting each other. Um, we, a lot of times we don't even think about that, which is really interesting um, when you get into couples who haven't thought about that at all. And they have like these completely different ideas of what a relationship should be. So you need to think about what that is, communicate that, and I feel like it's gonna be very successful, especially with the Page of Wands, because this is a brand new, like, yeah, breath of fresh air kind of beginning that um, comes in with so, a little bit of passion for you, and that may be what has been um, missing a little bit. So love you, group one. Thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group two. If you picked the green lucky deck, you are in the right spot. So as I was shuffling through, two cards came out for you, two ephemerator cards. I only intended to do one, but two came out, so we are gonna look at both of them. Get centered. When it, is, when it gets to be too much, whatever it is, I close my eyes and return to my center. Um, in my center, I have wisdom and tranquility of a so now is the time, what is your favorite animal? So I'm going to say horse. Um, holding a magical item here, I'm gonna say chocolate. <laughs> Floating through space on a, and this is a piece of furniture. So yeah, I, you didn't think you were gonna do Mad Libs today, did you? Um, so uh, my piece of furniture is going to be sofa. So I have the tranquility of a horse, holding chocolate, floating through space on a sofa. <laughs> I'm not sure a horse would be centered or tranquil in that, but it is fun and it kind of gets us out of our um, funk or out of our mind a little bit. So let me know what your favorite animal is, your magical item, and your piece of furniture that you would be floating through space on. I want to know. And then the other one is power. I am strong, I am ground, I am powerful. I am like a cross between a dinosaur and a tank, but not a tank that is used for war. I am like a peaceful, loving dino tank who fills um, so strong it doesn't need to do anything but be. Um, and you know, sometimes we kind of go between like this look, kind of loss of being out of control and then this powerful thing. So I feel like they, you know, this could be related as. Um, very much a need to 
be, to do some grounding work here, to be grounded, to be centered, to come back to your heart center. And both of them talk about um, tranquility and peacefulness. Um, so that seems like that'll be a challenge this week for you and something um, to concentrate on. So let's get some, some more cards. What else for group two for the next week? Group two energy for the next week. This one wants to come out. It is the moon reversed. Okay. Uh, what else do we have for group two for next week? because the last group like cards were just flying out there we go there we have a flyer okay so very interesting we've got the moon reversed we've got death reversed we've got six of swords reversed and then we've got ten of wands upright so in the over here with the death reversed and six of swords reversed both of these are cards about movement about endings about transitions but we have them reversed so i feel like um either you are stuck someplace or you want to be stuck someplace so um it, which if you want to be stuck someplace great <laughs> sometimes when we have change um like a change that we have in death, like it is a change that happens. It's very cyclical. It is something that usually we cannot control. Um, the six of swords, this change, it usually comes after like a storm and um, you are just done with being in the position that you're in and you are moving. But when we've got both of them in reverse, it talks about um, you know, something has been happening and even the Ten of Wands kind of talks about this as well, where it has been kind of trying or kind of difficult on you. Change might be a good thing, but it's not really ready for you yet. And I feel like you really need to be like these two things here. Um, suggests that we really need to center yourself. We want to be proactive, not reactive. And I feel like being centered and at peace and making decisions from your heart center is what really what you need. And you really need to understand your own power, that you are the one in charge here, that you are the one who is going to dictate where you go and what change you make. And while you may feel like you're in a rut or you may feel like you're stuck or you may feel like you're even in a cycle that um, you're not learning anything from, it's because you have not yet um, accepted your power. Now, when we've got the 10 of wands here, we have the 10 of wands upright. And I'll show this card to you a little bit more in depth because it is important. Um, each one of these wands, now usually, the, the person is walking up a hill, but pandas <laughs> are a little bit lazier than most people. So still is carrying this burden, but is kind of just resting here. 10 in tarot is completion. Your burden, this burden that you've been carrying, even though like you probably feel like, yes, I need to let this burden down. I cannot handle it anymore. Um, the Ten of Wands is saying that it is coming to an end. This burden is coming to an end. It is time to set these things down. You can also kind of go back to this power card where this burden that you have is something that you have picked up yourself. So the person who can put it down is you. And an, an example of this would be that you are, you know, in, in a particular job and you want them to see how smart and how brilliant and how great you are 
course that you've just been picking up little things here and there. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. You've been raising your hand and really the only thing that it has accomplished is you doing more things and working more hours and being more stressed out for the same amount of money. So it is time to set a boundary here. Um, moon, I, I kind of like jumped into everything else here, but the moon um, reversed and the death card, both of these cards are major arcana cards. So they are major energies, which meaning, um, you know, a change is going to be inevitable, but I feel like you are the one who needs to initiate it and you need to decide what that change is going to be. The moon reversed. Well, what is that change going to be? You don't know right now. <laughs> okay. And it's kind of like, um, this get centered card. Um, when there's all this, you can see all of these arms going out here when there's all of this chaos kind of going around you. And when you're carrying all this burden, it's not really clear. And that's what the moon card talks about. When you think about going outside at night, you're only guided by the light of the moon. Things look very, very different than they do in the daylight. We need to check some light on this, which means that we need to do some focusing on this. So if something, I also love that this little panda is wearing like a sleep hat. So it is something kind of very related to the 10 of wands here. Something is occurring in your life that's very tiresome. And we need to, again, shed some light on this and really kind of dig into it a little bit and figure it out what it is exactly that is feeling burdensome to you. Because sometimes um, this can happen with anything where it just becomes overwhelming or too much. And a lot of times it's, it can be even something that we really enjoy. And um, you don't really um, realize it. Sometimes it sneaks up on you because the 10 of wands is kind of like, you keep picking up, like you pick up one stick and carry it, and that's not a problem. And then two sticks, and that's not really that bad. And three and four, and, five. and then finally you have like these 10 wands that you're carrying around and that becomes a burden. So it seems like it's something that's been over time that you just got more and more and more and more of. And it's really, this week is about concentrating on what that is, putting it down, taking a break. Maybe it is a vacation, maybe it's a staycation and really digging into it and discovering your power. Now for me, um, I will just give you an example because there's a, an online game that I like to play and it's really not a problem and I can play it on my phone and I can do it anywhere, but it has gotten like so big and overwhelming that it's, it's not Candy Crush, <laughs> but, but I do play it with other people and I feel like a responsibility to it and it's just gotten too much. It's gotten to feel like it's a job rather than something that's fun to do. So um, that would be like an example of like a burden that you don't really see coming in. It's something that you will kind of find pleasure in, but now it's just way, way too much. Could be like a project where you have gone and you're gonna refurnish, re redo some furniture and it just has gotten like out of hand and you need to step back from it. And maybe it's something that you're not going to return to, or maybe it is something that you're going to return to, but right now you kind of feel stuck with it and that's not a good feeling. So it's time to get centered and recalibrate you and what's important and what you need to do and where you really need to go, figure out your power and go from there. Now the positives of the moon card can talk about like releasing fear. And I feel like that is connected here with the 10 of wands is because why did you pick up all of these burdens in the first place? Were you afraid that nobody else could do them? Do were you, did you want to try to prove your worth? Are you a people pleaser? Did you want to pick up all of these things? Um, so I feel like there is some kind of like, uh, things coming in like that where you're um, working out some like uh, repressed emotions as to why you kind of feel this way. And again, that goes back to this getting centered and really feeling, uh, you know, finding your power because um, when you're a people person, you think that you just, or a people pleaser, you, you think, um, you're doing all these things for other people, but is it really like, are you doing it because you're afraid of 
what they might think of you if you don't do it? Are you doing it because you're afraid that um, you know, you're trying to prove your worth in somehow? So I feel like this get centered in power is so, so really important um, to this reading and to you figuring it out, these things out, releasing these fears, releasing this burden, and even just trying to people please is the burden of itself. Um, but I feel like the death card is definitely, you know, we're moving over here about a personal transformation of you figuring this, this stuff out, figuring out your own power, and then really um, deciding on where that it is that you want to move. Because the Six of Swords, you are guiding yourself to move in a, in a place um, when this is upright. Uh, swords is a suit of logic. It is a suit of thoughts. So when it's in reverse, you know, we need to control our thoughts. We need to really examine our thoughts. We need to become an observer of our thoughts to kind of tell us something a little bit more about it. And it is definitely involved here with our emotions. And the moon is very, very connected with your emotions. Um, so it's an un, it's getting that but usually, but because it's reversed here and because the Six of Swords is reversed, I feel like um, it has to deal with some fear and releasing those fears um, and really, um, really revealing your true power. But you're a dino tank. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pull two more cards here of advice. really connect here with group two. What can we get some further advice for group two? Okay, we can. Music. And one more for group two. It's funny that music came up because it kind of came up in group one as well. Um, light music and light so let's start off with music listen carefully for there may be a message in the music you hear music can lift your soul rekindle memories and charm fairies to your door um, music is really really important it can transport us places it can take us um, it can take us back in time, it can take us back to a feeling, it can take us back to a person. It is also very therapeutic. I was talking about in the last reading music being therapeutic and um, me being a mom, my therapy is hanging out in my car by myself and listening to music, but that is very therapeutic. Um, so use music wisely, let it help you. Sometimes it can help you um, just as an aside, not necessarily related to this reading, but like uh, it's a great motivator. Um, if you are feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're not wanting to move or you're not wanting to do something, music can help get you up and get you moving. So choose your music wisely because it is really important. And then we have light. The fairy queen of light comes to shed love and light onto your current situation and to remind you that light can penetrate the darkness. I absolutely love this. We've got the moon in reverse here. I've talked about shedding light on some situations that maybe they aren't completely clear right now because it is um, you know, you have it's under layers of um, emotions or it's under layers of, of things that you have done and you need to kind of back up and figure out why it is that you picked up these burdens, what it is that you're doing and, and figure that out for yourself um, because this gets centered in this power absolutely perfect for you for next week. Um, let's let go of some of the chaos that's going around you, figure out your power and then start moving in a direction that feels good to you because you are the one dictating it, not because you're reacting to everything that's going on around you. So that's what I have for you, group two. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading for next week. So this is the group who picked the um, unicorn duck, and um, welcome. So the first card that came out here from these, uh, this ephemerators deck 
is magic. I believe in magic. I see evidence of it all the time. And though the tricks can possibly can probably be explained away by something sensible or ordinary. I'd rather not ruin the fun. Other people can feel fill their days with mere coincidence. I'll fill mine with holy crap, that's unbelievable. So I absolutely love that because um, when you think about it, our existence here is a miracle. Um, you being here, me being here, it is rather extraordinary. Um, that we're all here at this time and this point, um, that we are experiencing what we're experiencing, that I can communicate with you in the way that I can communicate with you over the internet <laughs> through a video. I am like right now sitting in my um, kind of dining room talking to myself, but it, or I am doing some very magical things with um, some cards here and we're explaining some of the workings of the universe here for our next week. So very beautiful card, I love that. I'm gonna take that too. So I'm gonna take that too and sorry I had an interruption and now like the whole deck wants to come out for you. Um, I just wanna take one card at a time here. Total of four cards, there we go. Give me one, of, okay. Um, Spirit says, nope, I'm going to give you a bunch of different cards. So we've got Three of Wands, King of Cups reversed. What other cards can we have that go along with these and magic? Other. The Hermit. And one more card. Page of Cups. Okay, very interesting. Um, it's interesting. This has kind of happened in group one as well, where we had um, kings and pages opposed, opposed to each other. And what I mean by that is we've got the King of Cups over here reversed. We've got the Page of Cups um, upright. I almost feel like I'm going to hyper focus kind of on this King of Cups at the moment because I think it's really important that we have him reversed. The King of Cups is somebody who is absolutely in control of his emotions. Um, you might think of him as a person who could be a hermit, um, but he's not really. He is connected to other people and he really cares deeply, um, but he's kind of on his own island. Um, you don't necessarily, he's not gonna be like, even though this is cups and it's it's the suit of emotions, he's somebody who's, who's very much very calculated, very in control of his emotions, um, and it's somebody who cares very very deeply. But we have this in reverse, so I almost feel like there might be somebody in your life um, that you feel a little disconnected with emotionally, possibly a mature masculine. Um, somebody who bear, uh, in, in, um, embodies masculine energy, masculine, feminine. Um, this, this would be somebody who kind of stands out and controls things versus um, is, is nurturing and creates things. Um, and it almost feels like, because we've got the hermit then that comes right after this. And then even this three of wands, this three of wands we've got our back turned, <laughs> okay? I'm just looking at the, the, the particular image on the card. So it would almost feel like this next week is a little bit lonely and you feel a little bit disconnected from things. Maybe even emotionally, you're going in deeper, not necessarily showing those emotions to other people. People. Um, the King of Wands can represent a person or it can represent you and a particular energy that you're feeling. If this is a person that you're having a conflict with, the King of Wands or King of Cups, not Wands, King of Cups would be a water sign, which would be Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. So um, you could be having a conflict with one of those signs. If in this reading, this means a person for you. And if you were sitting across from me, we'd have a conversation about that. Um, otherwise, it kind of just feels like a very disconnected energy. Um, Three of Wands here is about starting on a journey. You have, um, 
you've thought about something, you've planned for it, you're kind of, this, this panda is supposed to be on like a hill top and you can't necessarily, I mean, it could be a hill, hill top, it could be just sitting on grass, but um, the panda is supposed to be at, like on a hill top, like surveying the lands below him, um, feeling like he is the master of that. However, I, with, when we have the king of cups right after that reverse, um, I feel like there's some doubt here. So the magic card is really, really important because it, it, it feels like you do need to bring some magic into this next week to, to help you out a little bit. Um, to make sure that you're not getting a little bit down. There's no, there's nothing wrong with being very internal, um, being an introvert. And um, if you're an introvert, you totally identify with the hermit and you're totally fine with that. But you're, if you're an extrovert, this might be a difficult week for you, okay? Because this talks about kind of going, like all of these cards, kind of going internally and figuring some things out with your emotions and your emotional state. And um, the King of Cups, when we have him in reverse, you can talk about being like very stoic and maybe not showing emotions. Um, and maybe it is like you feel like you should be showing more emotion and you just aren't right now for whatever reason. Maybe um, you don't want to tap into something that is very hurtful. And don't worry, I mean, you are a person. Those emotions will come. Um, it is just something that you kind of need to um, deal with. Um, and the emotions feel like they're it might be a little bit repressed emotion or a little bit, um, not necessarily out of control, but certainly repressed. And you need to kind of, that's why the hermit is here. And the hermit is a much bigger energy than the king of cups, even though this is a king. The hermit is a major arcana card. This is a major energy. The king of cups might be something that you feel for a day or for a week. The hermit is a card um, a kind of like more of introspection where you uh, embody that for a much longer period of time, for a season, for a year. Um, and the Hermit card is really examining some things. So interesting to me when we look at the Three of Wands and the Hermit, just the images on the cards where the Three of Wands has kind of got um, his back turned to the situation and the Hermit is like, you know what, I realize that um, this can hurt me, this can harm me, I'm no longer going to turn my back on things. I need to address it. And maybe right now I need to address it alone and that's okay. But um, you need to figure these things out for yourself and you really need to look at it and examine these things. Um, there is a story about um, he used to work for a doctor and he was a very brilliant person, but he did not want to deal with problems at all. He like, which was weird because if anybody would be capable of dealing with problems, like he could do that, but he like would turn his back on issues or on problems. And, um, a lot of times I needed his guidance to figure out, okay, well, because I worked for him, like, well, what do you want to do about this situation? Or what do you want to do about this? And he never wanted to talk about it. And what was interesting to me is one of his nurses explained it. And her and I, I, I grew up with animals. Um, she grew up with 4-H um, or FHA. FH, anyway, horses, cattle, those types of things. If you are around an animal that is much larger than you, um, a steer, for instance, or a horse, you always have your hand on that horse or on that steer. And the reason being is one, to let them know where you are as you're walking around them doing whatever it is that you're doing. Or two, if there is going to be a problem, 
you want to know what that problem is. So when you're going behind a horse, you have your, your hand on their body and you can feel their muscles tense up if they're going to kick you, okay? Um, so the nurse explained it to me in that way, like that she always likes to go on head on with her problems because she was trained that way from, in, and she's like, listen, I know that I know your background. I know you used to raise animals. I know you used to be around them and you face your problems, the animal, the steer, the whatever. You are head on with it because you want to know what they are thinking about. You want to know what's going on in their mind. You want to know what the problem is that's going to happen so that you can react to it. And she's like, he wasn't like that. He wasn't raised like that. So that's why he doesn't um, face his problems or he just lets it go. Or he, And that made a lot of sense to me. So I hope that makes sense to you as well. That um, we, we really need to put our, you know, it's kind of like keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. You need to be in touch with that kind of like that, maybe even that dark side, those dark emotions, those things that scare you. You need to be in touch with those so that when it comes up, you can deal with it as it comes up. And that kind of um, also reminds me here of the Three of Wands, because this is somebody who has planned for things, even though in the actual image of this, this, this bear is not looking at things or not facing problems. There has been a plan set forth in the Two of Wands that the Three of Wands is now going to um, set forth on. So I really is about getting in touch with your emotional side this next week and planning for those things. It's really about getting ahead of it. It's really about kind of like bossing up and taking care of things, making those phone calls that you don't want to make. Um, you know, calling the call, you know, if it's calling your doctor and making a doctor's appointment, even though there's nothing wrong and just getting like that baseline um, stuff that you haven't done in years. <laughs> I'm speaking to myself here because I have not in years gone and gotten a checkup. It is about kind of like doing those things and facing them ahead on this week. Okay. Now that kind of rant is over and the payoff to it is this page of cups. The We've got the, you know, the king of cups here reversed. So we're kind of like not really sure about what's going on with our emotions or with us or, you know, kind of feeling a little bit out of touch. But the page of cups is very refreshing. It is letting go of a lot of these, these negative things that really aren't a problem to begin with because you've actually faced them. And you're like, you know what? That isn't even a problem. I don't know why I was so worried about it. I don't know why it was so difficult for me to make this phone call. I don't know why it was so difficult. You know, and these could be things that you're just putting off like in a financial situation, maybe you need to roll over that 401k. Maybe you need to look into that Roth IRA. Maybe you need to, um, maybe you, you're trying to look into cryptocurrency. Whatever that thing is that you had in the back of your mind and it's kind of bugging you and you now have an emotional attachment to it, it's time to look at it with this hermit, look at it and face it head on and do it. And what's going to happen Remember our magic card, and now we've got the Page of Cups, because the Page of Cups is very much um, related to magic. Look, first of all, we've got a rainbow magical beanie on. We have a flower. You know, this is just like, look at how much lighter it feels than a lot of these other cards. Um, and then the cup itself, and the Page of Cups is typically drawn with this like fish coming out of the cup. And it talks about like the magic or the wonder or the possibilities, like these great possibilities. Once you tap into your emotions rather than avoiding them and have them work for you. Okay, <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. We're gonna get two more cards here. And the, oh, purity, I love that, that we have a, uh, a unicorn to match. It also, very interesting, this uh, Three of Wands um, panda also is wearing a unicorn. So this is definitely, if you're drawn to unicorns, this is the thing for you. Oh, and ask for help. 
very good. So you don't have to be in this alone, even though the hermit is like, you're, you feel like you need to figure out some things. If you need help, ask for it, but we're gonna go with purity first. So purity always trusts in the purity of your heart. Look inside your heart and within you and you will find the answer to your question. And I love that there's a lantern very much related to the hermit. I love that we've got the unicorn. So these, these synchronicities happen for a reason. That's why I use different decks. That's why I use different things because I like to allow these synchronicities to come in and this is a confirmation to me and to you that this is what you need to hear and I'm telling you exactly what it is that you need to hear. I also feel like the magic, the page of cups, the unicorns, all um, create like this magical space for you and I, I feel like you have not been feeling the magic, but it's time to open up and to let that in and to follow your light. The hermit and this um, unicorn are both following their lights. They're following where their heart is leading them, their heart center. And then ask for help. Angels are celestial beings who protect everyone. And the fairies say now is the time for you to ask for angelic assistance. So if you are confused, if you're really not sure, like you've maybe been planning where to go here with this three of wands, but this three of wands is not my typical three of wands that I like to see. Um, this three of wands is sitting down, is looking, um, you know, has, has his back to us, even though he's got like, open to magical possibilities. If you're really open to magical possibilities, ask for help. Um, part of this discovery here of your emotions and what's guiding you kind of with this King of Cups and the Hermit can be journaling. And you can ask for help in your journaling. You can be open to it or your prayers. Um, I, I ask for help all the time. I ask for help with my readings. I ask for help to, to make sure that I am doing a good job for you and that you're getting the messages that you need to hear. I ask for help when I am making decisions. I ask, asking for help in your prayers, like before you go to bed is awesome as well because your subconscious mind continues to work on something. It's almost like cheating, I think, when you're like, you know what, here is something I'm just gonna give to my subconscious, and then you wake up, you set the intention that um, the angels are gonna come in to help you, or you're gonna figure this out while you're sleeping, and then you wake up and boom, you have a solution, or you have an idea, or you have a direction, and it's like magic. So, even though I feel like you might be having a hard time right now, group three. I, you're gonna figure it out next week. I have faith in you. The angels have faith in you. Um, this unicorn has faith in you. And um, it's, it's gonna be magical. So love you so much. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next reading.